Grace and peace, everybody. Blessings to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's good to be able to come and share with you all again from the word of the Lord. Come on in. Let's talk for a moment. Um, I want to share something. may not be very long tonight, today. However, I am Apostle Richard E. Youngblood, also known as Apostle YB. Um, and I welcome you today. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. And let's just spend some time in the Word on today. As you come in, do me a favor. If you are watching on Facebook, you already know I see somebody already doing it. Thank you, Pastor Tammy. Put somebody's name in the chat so that they can receive the word on today. Um, tag your friends and your family. Post it to your page. Put it in your groups. Um, and let's talk today. I really want to help somebody through the word today. In just a moment, we're going to pray, and then I'm going to greet those of you who are in the room that I can see on the live, um, and um, then we're going to do the teaching for today. Thank you so much, Pastor Tammy, for evangelizing on this beautiful Friday morning. <laughs> Blessings to you all as you come in. Listen, if this is your first time, please make sure you let me know. Um, we want to love on all, all of, of the first timers. Um, and let you know how much we appreciate you and welcome you to our family. Um, I'm grateful for everybody, but I want to make sure that we spend some time um, celebrating those of you who might be here for the first time. All right, in just a moment, we're going to pray and we're going to invite the presence of the Lord. Let's pray now. Father, thank you for this time that you give us. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing. Thank you for being sovereign, seated on the throne. Um, you are so good. We love you. We honor you and we magnify you. We thank you so much for the Holy Ghost and thank you that the Holy Ghost brings fruit into our lives. We pray now that in the name of Jesus, that Holy Ghost would prosper in us, grow in us, mature in us, bring us to what you created us to be. We are so grateful and thankful uh, to you for everything that you're doing. Now, Father, get the glory out of this time of our gathering. We honor you in advance. We thank you for what you're doing in the lives of every believer. Father, we also lay before you on today, this country and everything that's going on around this country. Father, all of the things that pull people into contention, that cause people to move by a spirit of hatred. We bind it up in the name of Jesus. And we declare that the spirit of God will move across this world and even across this country like mighty waters. You will rush through us like never before. And you will cleanse us and make us whole, make us the people that you called us out to be. We thank you for it. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, let me speak to those of you who I see in the room. I see Pastor Tammy. Good morning to you, Pastor. Thank you so much. I saw you evangelizing this morning and welcoming, inviting people. I see some of them have even come on as well. Thank you so much, Pastor. I appreciate you. Hi, Bonnie. It's good to see you as well. I haven't seen you on in a couple of days. We've been on it's good to have you with us today. Thank you so much. There is a powerhouse. Hey, Sandra. Uh, good morning to you. Happy Friday. Of course, you know I love you. I thank God for you. I see you got a new book coming out. You're going to have to let me interview you one day 
so we can share with the audience all the things God is doing for you. Hi, BJ. Always good to see you as well. Um, blessings, blessings, blessings upon you. Beverly, as always, so good to see you. I thank God for you. There's my friend. Hi, Linda. Bless God for you. Thank you so much for being on. Blessings and shalom as always to you. And I receive it today in Jesus' name. Hi, Rachel Joe. Always good to have you with us. Thank you so much for being on. I'm glad Pastor Tammy was able to get you uh, and you're here on today. Shatera, always, always good um, to see you on with us as always. Let's see who else do I see here. Shasha, bless you. Good to see you. Thanks for being on. Blessing the Lord be upon you. Overflow. Hey, Carmelita. Always good to see you. I'm glad you're on. Blessings to you. Overflow. Hi, Vivian. Great to have you. Blessings to you in Jesus' name. Overflow, overflow. Akisha, good morning to you. Thank you so much for being on. Love you. Blessings to you. Hi, Joel. Blessings to you. Good to see you today. Live for God Almighty. Great to see you. Blessings to you. Thank God for you. Hey, Pam. Blessings to you. Good to see you. Thank you so much for being on. I believe you're on vacation, but it's good to see you. Hey, Amen. You may be off vacation, but you look like you were having a wonderful time uh, while you were. High Etiquette Fashion House. You know, I love you. I thank God for you. I'm glad you're on and so proud of you. So very, very proud of you. I thank God for you. And Zelda, your first time joining from Louisiana. Um, Zelda, we're so glad to have you as a first time visitor. Um, I thank God for you. May God just bless you supernaturally and abundantly through the teaching on today and in all that you put your hands to. If you all can, would you please help me welcome Zelda Downs? She is here for the very first time. Let's let her know that we appreciate you, especially those of you who are on Facebook. All right. Blessings. Okay. Those are the ones who I see um, on our live today. All right. Now I want to, I want to, um, I want to share something with you. First of all, I just came um, back from the gym, took my shower and um, I wanted to talk to you all today. Um, first, I want to tell you something that happened while I was at the gym. And um, this is a way of enc to encourage you. And then I hope that this will allow us to get into a little bit of the word on today that the Lord gave us. Um, so I went to the gym and, you know, I've been, um, you all know, this is my birthday month. I turned 60 this month. And so, of course, you know, I want to keep my body in a certain shape and condition. So I've been really focusing on health. Um, and of course, if you've ever spent any time focusing on your health, the um, most challenging part is your mouth. Um, <laughs> and I'm not talking about the prophetic part. I'm talking about the food part, right? And so, of course, you go to the gym, you burn a certain amount of calories. And what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to, you know, put your diet together in a way that you're not putting all the calories back on that you just burned. So um, uh, today I wanted to go outside and walk and then go to the gym. Well, when I went outside and I started walking, it started raining. So I said, OK, no problem. I'll go to the gym. And I'll get on the treadmill. So um, I did. I got to the gym. There was no one there. Um, so I got on the treadmill and I was 10 minutes into my fat burn, which my fat burn, um, my heart rate is relatively uh, low. I, my resting heart rate is in the 50s, like, like 58 or 59. So I don't have to get 
a, a you know really really high heart rate or heartbeat to get in fat burn so i'm walking at a 3.4 miles per hour you know you, you can put it in on the treadmill right so i'm doing my 3.4 mile per hour walk and i'm set for 20 minutes and so <laughs> i walk for 10 minutes and i told you all that don't know this is my birthday month i'm going to be 60. i walk for 10 minutes and this 22-year-old young man comes in and he gets on the uh, treadmill right beside me. And an uh, old young whippersnapper, <laughs> he got on the treadmill right beside me and he started walking too. Um, but what I noticed is he was just walking because he was it was taking time for him to get the speed that he wanted on his treadmill so he kept ding 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 ding, and he got his up to 7.7 .7 miles per hour and he was running and boy he was running he was running and here i was right beside him doing my 3.4 <laughs> and he was running running running, running. and i was on my 3.4 and you know what dawned on me what dawned on me is this is where many believers exist you will be in your own lane doing what you're supposed to be doing, doing it at the pace that God set for you. And then someone will come and do what you're doing at the pace God set for them. And you feel like your pace is too slow. You feel like I, 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 I could keep up. Let me tell you something. There was no way in the world I was going to at 60 make myself believe that I could run the 7.7. .7. He, he ran for eight minutes at 7.7. .7. You know what I did? You know what I understood? I understood that I'm in my own lane and I'm running my own race. If I could get every believer to understand you are not in a competition with anybody. Do you hear me? Especially not no whippersnapper. <laughs> what would I look like? When I was 22, I could have done it too. I'm not 22. I'm three times his age. I should have slowed it down to 1.0. <laughs> now, now, out of out of that time, out of uh, that time in the gym, when I came home and I was showering, I heard the Lord saying, "I showed you today why most people, many should I say, people are unhappy. Many people are unhappy because they do not know how to be content with." themselves. I'm going to show you something and I hope that this will help you. I have a word for the unhappy today and this word is from the Lord. Um, there are far too many unhappy people in this world and I don't just want to limit this to the believer, but I do. Uh, I am assigned to talk to the believers. I believe that there are many unhappy believers, and this is what I feel the Lord wants me to share with you all today. There are far too many people in the body of Christ that use their faith or their trying to use their faith to change their lives, not because they want to be what God said, not because they feel the call of God on their life. It is because they are so unhappy with who they are, with where they are, with what they are experiencing that they want it to change because somehow where they are has infected who they are or at the least it defines them. So if they are temporarily out of money, 
it defines them. If they are temporarily in a bad situation, it defines them. If they are in a temp temporarily in a bad relationship, it defines them. If someone says something negative about them, it defines them. So they have not yet found the definition of themselves. So they're on the treadmill changing the speed based on who's running beside them because they are unhappy with themselves. There is a remedy for this. There's a remedy in the Bible for this. Now, um, I used to be one of the people that used to say, you know, don't, don't try to be happy because happiness is based on what's happening. But um, the Bible tells us to be happy. The Bible tells us to be happy. Listen, in 1 Timothy chapter number 6, verse 6 says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. The word contentment means a state of happiness and satisfaction. Here is what I believe is destroying many great men and women of God, even just really great humans. We don't know how to value ourselves no matter what condition we're in. You know the scripture that we use where, where Paul talks about he can do all things through Christ that strengthens him. You know, we use that scripture. Have you ever read where that scripture comes from? Have you ever read like the, the fullness out of that scripture? He's talking about when he's going through test or trial, whether he has food or not. He says, I've learned to be content in whatever condition I'm in. What he's saying is, I don't let where I am define who I am. Do you understand? Um, there was a time when I used to run track and I was very good. Uh, and that's not to be bragging, but literally um, I ran track through um, high school. But then when I went and when I joined the Marine Corps, I joined during a time where they were having a battalion um Olympics or something. I, don't, I forget what it was called right now, but the, each, our battalions would race against each other, just different track events. And I ran the 800 uh, at the time. And I ran the 800 in one minute and 52 seconds when I was in the Marine Corps. That's really fast. That's really, really fast. Um, and everybody was you know, like, oh my God, you could probably, maybe you should do this, maybe you should do this. And, maybe, and they were trying to push me toward running track and field. You know what I understood? I understood that uh, track and field wasn't the calling of my life. And maybe the Lord could have used me to do something great. But what I was not going to do was let even success in the wrong thing make me make a decision about my value or my life or my steps. But how 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 is it, though, that when it is the negative side of that, when we have something that is not successful, we have lack of success, it defines you. You are defined by your failure, but you don't allow your successes to speak with the same volume. And the reason for that is because most people are geared Somehow along the line, they learn to dislike themselves. And so what happens is the definition that you have of yourself, you put that in your relationship with God. And so you think that because you don't like you, then God doesn't like you. So everything that he doesn't do that you ask for is somehow punishment. It's only because you're unhappy. And because you're unhappy, God can't allow you to experience things that mature you because somehow, rather than you being mature, you get depressed. Now, I'm going to say this to you because I want you to hear it in the spirit realm. 
Unhappiness or a lack of contentment is in the same dimension and realm as depression and oppression. A person who is unhappy and unsatisfied is in the same realm as a person who is depressed. That's why when you talk to a person who is unhappy, it's difficult, it's challenging. And sometimes in cases, it's impossible to get them to see the light because they are almost in a spiritual realm. It's not about the conditions anymore. It's about perspective. Yes, Shabbat. It's, excuse me. It's about perspective. And their, their, their situation, it informs their perspective. They already have a negative perspective. So their situation informs it. They are praying, not that they believe that God is great and God is able and God is powerful and God is making something of them. They're asking continually for God to deliver me from my own perspective of myself. Maybe if he does something good for me, that means I'm good. It means I'm valuable. It means I'm worthy. Let me tell you something. When you are battling in the realm of unhappy and dissatisfied, you leave yourself open for oppression and depression to rule over you. Now, when 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 uh, Paul is talking here to Timothy, he says, but godliness with contentment is great gain for we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Do you see? how Paul so quickly connects contentment or the lack of contentment with possessions. And do you also see how, how many of us in the body of Christ have been pursuing God for his things, his stuff, for his loading us? He, the Bible says he loads us daily with benefits and we're looking around for some type of natural proof that he loves us. But listen to me, if this does not get you into the concept that he loves you, if for some reason you can't see the urgency of the love of God's heart towards you in that he put on the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and he went to a cross, taking on all of your sin, all of your issues, he bore them on himself. If that doesn't give you a value, see, this is the reason why I'm convinced that we need to begin moving back preachers to preaching Jesus again, because there are a lot of people that don't hear the love language of God when they receive Jesus. They, they just receive power, but they don't know that that power is rooted in love. That power is rooted in a value system that God places on you. You need to understand in the placing of a son, what has to happen. The Bible says, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. That word gave means to smack with an open palm. So that means God was punishing Jesus for you. But what happens is if you don't know that's value, you stay in this unhappy, unfulfilled, unsatisfied space. And what happens is if a prayer isn't answered, if a breakthrough doesn't happen, if a blessing isn't released, somehow to you, that means that you're not valuable and you're not loved. So you remain unhappy. But I got a word for you today. And the word that I have for you today is that you've got to find contentment. You've got to find a state of happiness, not a feeling. Listen to me. you got to find a state of happiness. you got to move out of the emotion of happiness. The Bible lets us know something. And I believe that uh, uh, we, we maybe have um, this scripture incorrectly in our interpretation. Let me grab this scripture really quick in the book of Psalms. Um, and, and I and I know that it is a um, it's a scripture that we all know very well. But I want you to listen to the words that we might be missing uh, in this scripture in Psalm thirty seven. Excuse me, verse three. It says, "Trust in the Lord and do good." So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord. 
and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. This is what I believe we've done. I believe we've taken the word that says he'll give me the desires of my heart as saying he'll give me the feelings of my desire. I, Lord, I want to be loved. I want to be happy. I want to have the house. I want it. And we think that th those, that's what he's saying. I'll give you the thing you desire. What he's literally saying, however, is I'll give you the desire. I'll put desire in your heart, the correct desire. Do you hear me? I will put, I will shape your heart and fill your heart with the right desire so that you're content with Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or summer or winter. You're content when you're young or when you're middle age or when you're old. You're not looking at yourself today and wishing you would have made a different decision 20 years ago. You're content right now. You find the state of happiness. Listen, I'm going to say this to you because I really want this to get into your heart on today. There are far too many people battling with unhappiness and you don't know this, but that thing's pulling you into a realm in the spirit where if you're not careful, you'll end up battling with an oppressed spirit or a depressed uh, spirit of depression because you don't know how to stay in a certain healthy place mentally concerning who you are. This is something that I have figured out. And I, I believe that we've got to conclude this. There are people who it doesn't matter who God is. They only interpret him based on who they are. So if he's not good, he could be good. But if he's not good to them, that's how they interpret it. He could be powerful. But if he's not powerful for them, that's how they interpret it. So if, as long as you are in that place where your feelings are in control of everything about your relationship with God, you will always battle with being unhappy. But I'm going to tell you something. You cannot move in the realm of faith. You cannot get breakthroughs that God has for you and not be content. You, you, can't, you cannot uh, have the value of, 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 of your life tied to whether or not you get a job or tied to whether or not you get married or tied to whether or not it happens in 2022 or not. You can't get caught up in those places because if you do, you'll always be unhappy. And listen, I've talked to people who are unhappy. Now, let, let, me, let me differentiate if I can today. I'm not talking about the people who are going through an area in life where you got to discern what's going on and you're not really emotional right now. You just, you're just kind of in a space. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people who no matter what goes on, they are unhappy with themselves. I should be better than this. I should be bigger than this. I should be beyond this. I should have had this money by now. You're unhappy. And that unhappiness is creating issues that you might not even be connecting. And I don't want to, God knows that I'm not a medical doctor, but I want you to know that there are some things that happens to your body that's based on just staying in a stress level all of the time. There are things that happen to your body. But, but listen how Paul says this then. He says, we go back to that first Timothy six and verse eight, he says, and having food and raiment, let us therefore be content. Paul said, if you got something to eat and something to put on, be happy. Um, you know what I believe? Uh, and I used to ask the Lord to put me in a position for this. I wanted everybody who was connected to me to make a missionary journey. Because all you got to do is make one missionary journey. And sometimes you ain't even really got to go outside the country. But all you got to do is really make one missionary journey to any third world nation and see how they don't have what you have. How they would consider you to be rich. But you know why you can't see it? Because you on this treadmill doing 3.4. And that whippersnapper is doing 7.7. .7, and you're saying, I should be as fast as them.
I should be living on the same street they live on. I should be eating in the same restaurants. I don't know why I don't drive this. I should be. You're unhappy because you keep looking at somebody else's race and comparing yourself and seeing what you lack. Stop comparing yourself to anybody. The thing, one of the things that I love about God is his love can be so universal and absolutely specific and individual at the same time. He is so engaged in your life and he's so involved in what you are concerned with. If you would just change your attitude about some things, get content in some things, stop competing with other people concerning a few things, your life will change. Some of, some of those of you who might be battling in the realm of unhappiness, it's the unhappiness that's keeping the doors closed. It's keeping the doors closed because you can't appreciate what you have. You can't even see the blessing that you have because you are your your val. Let me let me put it in these terms. You can't appreciate the car you're driving. You can't appreciate the fact that it's paid off. You can't appreciate the fact that your insurance payment is lower because you don't have a car note. You can't appreciate that because you've been to the car dealership because so and so is driving a this. And your value is connected to the that. So you're unhappy with a paid off vehicle. Because you can't see it. You can't see that you're driving a debt free car. You can't see it. You can't see that your bills get paid every month because you're trying to have surplus. You can't see it. So you're unhappy. One of the things that I want you to catch, and I, let me let me get this. Uh, into your spirits as well. Um, and, and then I'm going to let you guys go today. Listen to this. In Hebrews chapter number three, verse seven, wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said today, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. Now I want you to catch what's being said here. These people provoked God. And it was called the provocation. Listen, in the day of temptation, Lordness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work 40 years, wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said, they do always err in their hearts and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you. Now, I want you to catch what he's saying about unhappiness now. An evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Now, I want you to catch what's going on. Now, Paul is clear that when these people whom God have proved himself to, they saw his works, they tempted him for 40 years, but they never got to a place of contentment. So he said, you know what? I'm never letting you come into my rest. And he calls it an evil heart of unbelief. Now listen, but he says, but exhort, verse 13, but exhort one another daily while it's called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ in we, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast until the end. Catch this. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, hearten not your hearts as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. Howbeit, not all that came out of Egypt by Moses, but with, but with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? I want you to catch this: their lack of contentment, because they never honored God for what He was doing. They were always looking at what have you done for me lately? I fear, I fear, and I use that word as severely as I can. I fear that many of us, 
because we have somehow placed our value on what we possess or what we don't possess, that we are actually putting ourselves in a position now where we are provoking the Lord again. Learn to be content. Learn to be content. If today you only have a sandwich, thank God I had this sandwich. Yes, I would like to go eat the steak that I saw the guy on the other uh, uh, treadmill eating. But right now I eat right here. I'm going to be content because you know what I found out when your stomach is full, it does not matter if it was peanut butter and jelly that filled it or if it was steak that filled it. Your stomach is still full. Do you remember when 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 God fed the children of Israel? Do you remember what they said? Now we talk about manna, but do you remember why they called it manna? To them, it was like saying, what is this? What is this? We ate really well in Egypt. What is this? How many times have you, what is this? Something that God sent you. What is this? This, I deserve more. I should be in a better place than I deserve that job. I'm qualified. And now you unhappy. Meanwhile, your name is written. In the Lamb's book of life, you have an eternal seat in heaven. You will judge the world, and you're upset that you didn't get the job. Do you know why that is? Because unhappiness is in the same realm. Unhappiness is trying to pull you out of inheritance. It wants you to not see the grace of God that's functioning around you every day. God is blessing you every day. If you're watching me right now, there are three things that I have to assume. Number one, you woke up this morning. Number two, you got eyes to see. And number three, you got ears to hear. The fourth thing is some of y'all are typing. You got the mobility of all your limbs. There's somebody right now who's getting pushed around in a wheelchair. They'll never, ever be able to write, never be able to sing, never be able to hear. There are people who have none of those things. And yet, see, the enemy wants us to mistake, mistakenly identify uh, what, what really is greed he wants us to think that it's need. Your greed is not your need. Now, if God gives you more, be thankful. If he doesn't, walk at the 3.4. Because 3.4 for me, I need you to catch this. 3.4 for me, I watched, he put his hands, you know, you can put your hands on the, on, they got these paddles you can put your hands on and it'll tell you how fast your heart be this and how many calories you're burning. And I saw him touch. He wasn't even in fat burn. He was running 7.7. .7. I was way in fat burn at my 3.4 because what works for me is different than what works for him. When you find what works for you, individual, don't get bent out of shape because it's not what everybody else is doing or it's not the level that everybody else is doing. And, and uh, yesterday, Maybe it was last night or this morning, one of the two. The Holy Spirit was this morning. The Holy Spirit told me to speak a word specifically to business owners. And I thank you, Etiquette Fashion House, for um, typing right then. Um, the Lord told me to speak a word for business owners because here there, there, are, there are levels Um if you're a business owner, you know this, there are levels to owning business, right? And the first level, first actual two levels to owning business are extremely difficult. The birthing it out, um, number one, is, is extremely difficult. And that second part, when you are the sole source of also keeping it alive. I know that there are some of you all in that space right now. Once it gets to the third level where it's starting to make money, you're breaking even, that's encouraging. But then when it gets to overflow, you find out that 
you're not always prepared for overflow. You don't have the staff that you need. You don't have the sales force you need. You don't have the warehouse you need. All of those things you, you see that you need once the momentum starts catching on with your business. But, but there are some of you right now, you're either in the birthing out of your business or your business has been birthed, but you are carrying it. And if you are a business owner and you're carrying the business, you're probably carrying the business and carrying your home, carrying the responsibility of your home as well. And I wanted to speak this word to you. First thing I wanted you to understand is that God did not give you the business that he gave you for it to be like XYZ person's business. Okay? There's no comparison. I don't care if you all are doing the exact same things. There is no comparison. Listen to me closely. There is a parable in the Bible where Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is likened to a man who's going to go away on a trip and he called some people to him and he gave them uh, uh, one, he gave five talents, one, he gave uh, two talents and three talents, the other one, he gave one, two and one. And I want you to catch something. God does not give five talents to a person who could only handle one. However, he expects the exact same return. He wants you to double what he gave you. I need you to hear me. I need you to hear me. If we could, if we could get this concept, business owners, if we could get this concept that right now this business looks like this, I have X, Y, Z going on. Well, what my assignment is, double this. I cannot look at who's running. Their budget is bigger than mine. They have more customers than I have, more clients than I have. They have more revenue. They have more houses. Whatever it is that you do as a business, they have more. I cannot compete with them. But you know what I can do? I can take this one thing that I am good at and double this. See, when you start thinking in terms of just doubling what you do, don't look at, don't compare. And I get it. Sometimes we have to look at other business models and see how they did what they're doing. I get it. But if you put the pressure on yourself to become them, then you've run out of your lane. You in somebody else's lane. So when Jesus says that Lord came back, what happened? The man that had five talents got five more talents. The man that had two, two talents, got two more. But the man that had one did nothing. He said, I knew you were a rough man. And I knew that you reap where you don't sow. I didn't want to lose it. So I buried it. Here, here's what you gave me. That's, that's exactly the, the posture that I believe the unhappy stand in. The unhappy will take nothing that's given to them and mature it because whatever's given to them is not enough. What if God wants you to start it out with something small or maybe with, with almost nothing? Maybe that's how he wanted it to start. Isn't it amazing? You don't birth an adult. You start out with a baby and you raise the baby to be an adult, but you want all your blessings to come to you matured. I don't know about you, but I'm one day I'm going to do this and, I'm, and you have no plan to, to get to any of that. You need a miracle for everything. So that's why we're unhappy because everything that we need requires a miracle. And God, listen, God is not trying to get the believer to live in miracles. Did you hear me? God is not trying to get the believer to live in the need of a miracle. A miracle is done so that the unbeliever could be convinced in God. God is trying to get a believer to live in a standard in which the standard that they live in causes prosperity and blessings to come upon them. 
They're engaged in life a certain way. They understand how life works. They understand the process. I got to sow, I get to reap. I've got to be disciplined in my actions. That's how things come to pass. The other thing that you have to give God the ability to be in your life is sovereign. Let me tell you something. The moment you allow God to be sovereign, happiness comes off the table. Because what you know is if he's sovereign, he's my, he may do something that I don't agree with, but what am I really going to do about that? Do you think that if God does something you disagree with and you complain that he'll fix it? If you think you sit there and just pout, well, I ain't going to praise him no more. I'm hurt. He didn't do it. Do you think that you're going to blackmail him? Into, okay, I see you, baby. I'm sorry. He's sovereign. So you have to be content. You have to get into a state of happiness and contentment and being satisfied. I'm satisfied with this, Lord. I'm asking, but if that ain't your will, I'm satisfied with this. Don't keep trying to change everything. And, and you know, uh, some of the things that we are dissatisfied with and not content over, the world has been setting the standard anyway. Some of those things we desire, we, it's just, we didn't set, the Holy Ghost didn't set that standard for you. There was something else that, that made you feel that desire and you feel like if you don't get it, then you have no value. That's the plan that the flesh works to make you miss your breakthrough. That's what happened. For 40 years, they complained about everything God did. They were just, just discontented in every possible way. They were so discontented, they started comparing God's movement to the movement they had when they were under Egyptian bondage. Imagine that. You know how, how that kind of works out in our lives today? If God don't do it, we'll do it for ourselves. Well, I know what I'm going to do. I, I, I'll handle it. I got it. You're not content. You're not content. If a door closes, stop trying to pick the lock. Let the door close. Something I found out about God is that when God closes a door, it's because he's got a much better doorway to open. I don't know how many of you all remember there was a... Um, a TV show. I think that they they may it may be back on now too, but it was called Let's Make a Deal. And or Let's Make a Deal. Um the, the people would have some type of gift already, something they won already. And the guy would say, Do you want to keep what you have, or do you want what's behind curtain number one? And the deal was. If I give this up, I have to take what's behind that curtain. Do you know what I saw happen many times? I saw the people who thought what they had in their hands because it was small and the curtain was so big. They thought, I'll give up what I have in my hand. And when they opened the curtain, there'd be a goat behind there or a mule. Do you know what? They gave up something valuable because they wanted something that they couldn't see. They wanted something they thought was going to be more. Let me just say this to you. If God has given you something and it's in your hands, be content. Lord, I thank you for this. Lord, I thank, listen, listen, listen. Lord, I thank you for this ministry. Lord, I thank you for this house. Lord, I thank you for this marriage. Lord, I thank you for these children. Lord, I thank you for this life. I thank you for this job because I'm going to tell you what might happen. If you're not careful, you will be ungrateful and lose what you have in your hand trying to get what's behind the curtain. Stay on your treadmill at 3.4 and let those other people who are running faster than you run because they can. Don't you have a heart attack trying to keep up with somebody younger than you? Could you imagine 
I was I was literally on the treadmill and I was having this conversation in my mind. I was laughing to myself. I don't I had headphones on, so I don't know if he could hear me because I was kind of chuckling out loud. And I was thinking, wouldn't it be really dumb right now of me if I put my treadmill on 7.7 and he have to get me up off the floor, call 911 and call my kids? <laughs> because I was trying to keep up. You don't have to keep up. Run the race at the pace God set for you. Do you understand? And when you get cr across the finish line, that's the only time that matters. You're not running against anybody. Nobody. The only time that matters is yours. Remember the Bible says the race is not given to the swift and the battle is not given to the strong. Run your race. That's all you got to do. Run your race. That's it, Linda. Run your race. Because when you run your race, when you stand before God, he will never ask you why you didn't keep up with Steve and why you didn't keep up with Barbara and why you didn't keep up with Mike. He'll say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter. You ran your race well. You know what? The, you remember how the Bible says you did run well? Who didn't hinder you? How, how Paul was talking to the Galatians. They were doing so well. They let somebody hinder them. Somebody put a thought in their process and slowed them down. Please, I don't care who's teaching it. Don't get into competition. And I know that people don't necessarily teach competition, but if they teach that the presence of God is proven when you own or have or do, don't you get caught up in because I don't have it, then I don't have God. Don't do that. Be content with Holy Ghost. Ephesians says that's a down payment. Did you read that? The, the Holy Ghost is the down payment on our earnest, earnest expectation. Do you know what the down payment? The down payment is proof of purchase. It's mine. So the down payment is the Holy Ghost. I got, I, I don't know what else is, what else I'm going to get, but I got the down payment. I got the down payment. Don't get trapped in being discontented because as I said before, if you were walking in a place of unhappiness, you're also in the same realm where oppression and depression exists. And eventually a person can't be made happy. They have to be delivered. Don't let that be you. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today for your word. I thank you for your people. Thank you for being a God that cares about where we are, who we are. Thank you for the word today for those God who have been in positions or maybe even now in position where they've been feeling discontented. Those, Father, who have placed their value on what you do for them or what you didn't do for them. Thank you, Father, that today you let us know that godliness with contentment is great gain. Father, I pray that in the name of Jesus, you would allow us by the Holy Spirit to become content with what we have. The vision that you've given to us, the breakthrough that you've given to us, the love that you've given to us, the power that you've given to us, all that you have given to us, I pray in Jesus' name that we would learn to be happy. Now, God, I pray that we would be so happy that we would feel even laughter coming up out of our hearts. Laughter. God, return us again to that place where we have so much joy and contentment that we laugh, that we enjoy our lives, that our lives are not uh, burdened down with every day trying to become something better than what we were yesterday based on somebody else's standard. Help us to stay in that 3.4 lane and be rewarded because that's our speed. I give you honor and praise. Glory belongs to you. In Jesus' name, it is settled. Amen and amen. Well, I bless God for each of you. I thank God for you. I pray that, um, oh, oh my God, babies. I pray that the Lord um use the word today to encourage you whether you watched live or whether you're watching the replay i really want you to be content don't allow yourselves to get caught up 
and feeling pressured because of somebody else's pace. Stay in your lane, run your race, finish your course, get your reward. All right. I love you guys. Let's talk again soon. If we don't talk before the weekend is over, have an awesome weekend and I'll see you on Monday. Blessings.